First point of the flow chart, do you have insurance or do you not have insurance provided by your, by your employer, okay? Let's say you do have insurance provided by your employer, which is most American. Okay, not a whole lot is gonna change for you. Nothing really deep and structural. Now this is the first, first decision procedure. In fact, the entirety of the policy has been designed around that part of the flow chart, right? Because it's very scary for someone to come and say, on day one, you have Blue Cross Blue Shield through your employer, and tomorrow you're gonna have this new National Health Service, whatever it is, right? Yeah, you're gonna have you're, you're the death panel knocking on your door. <laughs> In government issue beeper suits. Um, so, so, okay, so first part of the decision, so you have employer-based, now what's gonna change for people who have employer-based health insurance, okay? The big thing is this, this sort of bill of eight kind of insurance reform. And these insurance reforms are things like no more rescission, right? You guys know what rescission is, right? You sign up for health insurance, you get sick, and they say, oh, you lied about your weight. True story, true story. Oh, yes. Is that for individual or job? That's usually individual, yeah. So that, 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 that mostly, but things like um, there's going to be sort of a standardization of what the minimum, what minimum um, plans can look like, right? So they're going to end the practice of lifetime caps. Right, that's another big one. So these are these are all reforms to, the, to constraining the way that current insurance operators operate. So what you know, okay, what's the other part of this flow chart? I don't have health insurance. Right. Well, you're going to have to get health insurance, right? And how are you going to get health insurance? If you don't have, if you make less than three hundred percent of, um, well, four hundred percent or three hundred percent of of poverty, you're going to get subsidized by the government to purchase that insurance, right? Where are you gonna purchase this insurance? You're gonna purchase this insurance on something that is called a health exchange. A health exchange is gonna be a menu of insurance options. Um, it's gonna be regulated by the government. It's gonna have things like this end to rescission enforced. It's also gonna have something enforced which basically says you have to have a standard baseline for what these packages can do, right? So you're not gonna, when I was making $9,000 a year in uh, 2002 as a freelance writer, I purchased Golden Rule Insurance, which actually turns out to be a demonically terrible company. And, 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 and the joke was on me because my father was like obsessed with me buying catastrophic insurance, understandably, because I was uninsured and he had this huge fear that I was gonna hit, get hit by a bus or something, you know, or something awful would happen. Well, it turns out that Golden Rule would have found some way not to pay me that. Like, I mean, it was sort of like, it was mostly I was paying 80 bucks a month for my father's peace of mind, which, um, so there's this health exchange. Now, this is where the public option comes in, and then I'm gonna wrap up because this is a little boring, but this is where the public option comes in, okay? The public option, this is a big misconception. The public option is only going to be, if it exists, inshallah, the public option is only going to be available to those people purchasing on the exchange, okay? Does that make sense? So this is gonna be this pool, and then in the exchange, among the menu of options in the exchange is gonna be the public option, okay? It does not mean the Nation Magazine is health reform passive. My employer can go and get the public option tomorrow, right? So it's and the CBO estimates that even with a you know a, a fairly subsidized public option, you're gonna have about 17 million people in it. So this is something to keep in mind also if you're talking to neighbors who are, who are basically believe the public option is like Stalin's you know camel nose under the tent. Or, or, or the, you know, one massive stride down the road to serfdom. Where, you know, where this is not, we, we're really in like this little part of the flow chart, right? Like there's like the whole big, and actually this, like, this is the perfect example of the analogy I was saying before, is that like, they have created this crazy ass map, right? With all these routes to get around all the mountains, right? They, Cause they don't want to blow anything up. So it's like, oh, you guys, we're gonna give you a raft, and you like go, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, you guys, you're gonna ford that thing, and then, you know, you're gonna take this train over, you know what I mean? So like, it's like everybody's gonna sort of find their way around to that we don't upset the landscape. So that is the, that's, now the third component, the final component is large systemic reforms that are gonna bring down costs. Okay, so the, so the flow chart, the, the flow chart is useful to think about, well, how am I, what's gonna happen to me, right? You have insurance, you don't have insurance. Broadly, what happens to the system is that Incentives are put in place that will bring down costs. And I'll just stop there. Well said. Yeah. Yeah.